wasn't sure what to title this video because it touches on several topics. It touches on um, attention, injury, posture, equipment, setup. So I uh, just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, I've been wanting to uh, make more videos on this topic, but I found it a bit daunting and kept putting it off, putting it off. You know how it goes. And so I just decided to... Um, you know, speak about it in no particular order. Um, this is not exhaustive. You know, there um, it's not the be all and end all. Um, you know, of the conversation. So, there are so many things to talk about, and I would like to just, you know, mention a few things as they come to mind. One of the things that I wish I knew a long, long time ago. I can remember all those times I practiced hours and hours as a teenager, um, getting ready for, you know, master classes, competitions, uh, you know, big performances, tours, uh, where I was, uh, you know, traveling abroad and um, concertizing. And I remember uh, just getting very, very tense and um, having issues on this side. Um, of course, I didn't have any injuries back then. It, the injuries came later, you know, they came in like um, basically my, my college years. But I was definitely, you know, uh, setting myself up for a bad situation because years and years of uh, playing a certain way throughout high school, you know, luckily I was young and my body sort of could, you know, handle it up to a certain degree. But then after a while, um, the injury is inevitable. Okay, so it's important to uh, have a good technique and understand, you know, what we are really doing, right? How much tension we're really using. Obviously, even as I sit up here and I talk to you, I am tensing up certain muscles so that I can properly, you know, support my, um, my structure, right? So that I can sit up straight and talk to you. And so uh, there are uh, good amounts of tension, proper areas of tension, right? So it's, it's a really, really complicated and, you know, long, long, <laughs> very uh, deep topic. But um, what I, what I wish I knew back then was, Basically, that I should not feel like I have to really, you know, clamp down and 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 really hang on tight to my instrument. It was, you know, something that I just felt like was kind of snowballing. And as I, you know, practice and perform, I it was it was getting worse as I feel more nervous, you know, those, those tough passages or, you know, the, um, the challenging performance coming up. And, uh, so, um, I knew that I was, I was having too much tension, but it was just never really talked about too much in my violin lessons. And I, I wish they had been, it's okay because I'm learning, um, you know, uh, after that I sort of started to kind of um, learn and figure things out on my own and with the help of some some um, teachers and you know some of the research that I've done as well so what um, I want to challenge you to do is um, think about it if you've really uh, thought about whether you're trying to hang on tight to your instrument or if you feel that it's it's kind of a you know moving it's a it's a, a organic you know a malleable sort of experience and relationship where the violin can you know move about and feel free you know, i did a study um you know within all the research that i've done on the topic and i did study some of the greatest violinists and you know what do they do during performances and many of them um, you know, obviously they kind of, you know, sway back and forth. They have certain very characteristic motions that they do as they play. You know, they'll be playing along and they'll, they might, you know, lift the scroll up or down or, or feel, feel like it slipped. So they would push the violin back up again. If you have, um, an interest in it, you know, go back and watch certain players and you'll see, you know, what do they really do with their violin? It's not, it doesn't look like they've really clamped down and held on to it you know, in, um, in one place for the duration of the entire performance. It's that's not how how um, it's done. The 
first time I finally started to understand this concept was after I had serious pain and injury and I had to learn how to hold my violin all over again. And um, I don't recommend this particularly um, to you because it's a very dangerous thing to do, but it's something that when you're ready to, you should probably explore a little bit. And that is using different um, uh, equipment, it's, it's per especially particularly the shoulder rest, okay? Um, by playing with or sh a shoulder rest, if you're not used to it, right? Or without a shoulder rest, if you're not used to it, it helps you to really understand, um, you know, how you're holding the violin. It, it makes you be a bit more flexible, right? But of course, all these things have to be done properly, not just by transferring all of your bad habits to the, to the other way, okay? So let me get a bit more specific now. Um, when I was a kid, I used a coon. That's what I used my my whole um, you know youth. This is a coon shoulder rest, right? It is uh, this one I believe is a viola shoulder rest, so it's not going to fit on my violin. But it's a very good shoulder rest. Um, if anybody of my students is interested in using a shoulder rest. This is the first one I recommend. Um, it's very, very good. They have many, many dupes um, that are for less, uh, less expensive. But like this one, I don't know what this one is. Um, I'm not sure what brand this is, but again, oh, here it says Viva. It's a Viva and um, it wasn't bad, but again, it's sort of a dupe. You can see it kind of kind of tries to be like it. So there are many that are going to look like the Kuhn, but I promise you I have never met one that looks like a Kuhn, but it actually feels like a Kuhn. All right. The reason why it I'm sensitive to it is because uh, the curvature, right, and the placement of the curvature is never the same. You know, when, when it sits on your shoulder, it has to be at a certain, you know, at a certain place, your shoulder has to fit just right at the right spot. Okay. And, um, there was also a time when I added an extra something right there. You'll see professional players. They do, they doctor up their equipment so much. Like there'll be a rubber band tied over here and there'll be like a, a cloth tied around here and there'll be like gadgets and gizmos every, everywhere. And they like it just so. Right, so there was a time where I was adding like one more sponge right there, and then that way it gave me a little bit of more lift right right there. So, like I said, there's so much to talk about in this topic. But there's the Coon shoulder rest. Okay, I grew up using that many, 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 many years. Then, after a long time, I went to the Wolf. This is like a piece of history right here. It's like a really old, old Wolf shoulder rest. It really needs to go retire. It is so sad. Uh, it's so tired and sad. But and I liked it because I could actually, you know, get these these feet twirl, right? And then they they can be taller or shorter. And I and I had this up quite a bit. It was really really high. You know, I think um, my neck is about average, um, but you know, sometimes I do feel like it's a little bit on the little bit on the longer side and I need a little bit more more filling filling out there so for a long time I had it super high it was interesting and um, and I I did that for you know a couple couple of years actually not a long time couple of years and then after that I went to this setup um, actually not exactly this setup this is a cosmetic sponge um, I like this sponge a lot because if you use other sponges like kitchen sponges and things like that um, kitchen sponges tend to dry out and they harden and it's not doesn't feel very nice anymore and other sponges they tend to collapse too much so they'll just they'll just be too too airy and foamy and so they don't they'll just they look nice and big and then they'll just flatten down to to nothing because obviously your you know your head needs to sit down on and they'll flatten out. So I like this cosmetic sponge. Um, I, uh, 
use um, you know just one right now and it's basically like having having nothing but the reason I like it better than nothing is because sometimes I'm wearing a really soft you know um, sweater or something and I just feel like it's just sliding sliding too much so I just like a little bit of grip and um, as you can see it's, it's just right there it actually needs to be adjusted uh, a lot of kids when I teach um, violin um, they my students complain about this hurting their their neck here and so this is great if I just scoot it here it's just, it moves after a while so if I scoot it to the very end that's the other thing <laughs> see how there's so much to talk about putting the shoulder rest on or the sponge on in the proper place oh it matters a great deal okay it, it'll either make it work or it'll just break it okay it just it, it it's a deal breaker for me okay so so this one I just scooted it you see how I covered the metallic area now and so it gives just a little bit more comfort here and then because it's sponge it just sort of gives a little bit of grip and then I can you know put it on um, you know whatever no, no matter what I'm wearing especially if I'm wearing like faux fur or something is super slippery right so we want to we want to have a nice um, nice grip okay so this is what I'm doing right now but um, after the wolf uh, shoulder rest let me get back to my story um, I use two of these all right so I would put one and then I would slightly overlap and, and then I'll put another one, okay? Or they have the uh, the cosmetic sponge that is the double um, double thickness. So I did one double thickness and one regular thickness. And then you just play around with it, and then you you find the place where, where you like it, okay? So some people they like it um, thicker thicker on the chin rest side and thinner on the other side. Chin rest side would be the back side. You see how the chin rest is here. So some people like it thicker back here and thinner back here. Some people like it thinner back there and thicker up here. So what it does is it changes your, the, um, you know, the, your, your work table, basically. This is like your work table. So if you like your G string tilting a bit higher, right? Or if you like it kind of more, more flat, you can see high fits, you know, he, didn't have any anything on his violin and and you know of course you look at physiology so you look at his shoulder structure right his shoulders his neck jaw chest even some 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 people their chest kind of comes out more right this this area and some people have it a bit more flat and so that matters because then it, it provides either more support or less right so all of these things change change how your violin is sitting on your shoulder okay I'm sorry this is rambling and I think it's gonna be continue to ramble okay but I figured I should at least get this video out to you because I've been putting it off for so long and this is this is kind of why right so um, so I like this now all right and um, I guess for me I like the violin fairly flat but that de definitely has a little bit of tilt you can see from the side view you see my my this side is higher than this side so many things to consider okay the reason why i really really like to use just a little bit of sponge now is because i really like the feeling of the violin sitting on my collarbone so my collarbone goes out to there and then it, the violin sits on my shoulder and the collarbone and I like that because what happens is when you have a violin that's doing that, look at this, all this space, there's freedom. So if I were to go and I were to play up on the G, right, really, really up high, see how my shoulder comes up. See over here? It's hard to tell, isn't it? This is like my normal first position, okay? And then when I come up for the G, yes, you can tell right there. Then it fills out that space. I'm not, I'm not coming up and clenching. I mean, I'm just bringing my shoulder around so you can see, right, my shoulder height. And then when I come around, see how it just naturally comes up because my arm is coming up. So um, I also, when, I, when I'm doing this, right, I can feel this muscle right now contracting right and relaxing so even just doing this right even even going to the even swinging my arm to the g level to e level i can feel the this part of my shoulder 
um, coming a bit up and down, up and down. Okay, so why am I talking about that? Well, because when I put on the shoulder rests, I'm sorry, I can't put the coon on because it's the wrong size, it's for a viola, but let's put on this one. This basically will demonstrate, you know, what almost all shoulder rests do. Okay, so I think, wow, I haven't put a shoulder rest on in such a long time. All right, so you see, it sits kind of at the edge there. I think it needs to go in more, so I can I can maybe. Um, also, I, I'm very particular about which um, which foot I move, right? So I like to move the one that makes the contour uh, fit my shoulder better. So you can kind of figure that out. Right now, I'm moving the the back side. I'm moving the back side longer. That makes any sense. Okay, it's a little bit more the way I like it. Um, again, sorry I'm rambling, but as I think of these things, it's important that I mention them to you. Some people angle it. Do you see that way more? Some people angle it this way more. You see how this side goes in and this side is out. So everybody's different. You have to find what works for for you, but I like mine pretty straight, straight across. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put my put my violin on my on my shoulder, and it feels much higher already. Do you see how it really brings my violin up? There's a lot of space down there, but <laughs> this is what I want to show you: is that the shoulder rest is sitting now right here. So I'm gonna point to the spot and I take my violin off. It's point. It's sitting right there on this part. Okay. So do you see? This is the end of my shoulder, and then there's there's where my shoulder rest was. It was like like there. Okay. So now, whenever I want to, want whenever I want to, you know, like change um, my arm position or go up high, right? I can feel there's there there are muscles, tendons, ligaments, and whatnot, moving inside of there. And that's the place where my shoulder rest is sitting. Okay, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't feel nice anymore. I can, I can feel that. Okay, and the, and the people that wear it even more deeper, you know, they slide it in even more, it's gonna, it's gonna slide more and more and more. It's gonna be really out there kind of where the shoulder cuff is, right? So think about that when you put your shoulder rest on and you put your violin on your shoulder, right? Where is it pressing? And then, you know, try to do all the most difficult, you know, techniques and see if you noticed, if you notice that it's pressing there, right? Um, that's the main reason why I don't, I don't like the shoulder rest anymore. And I find that, you know, this chin rest I have is pretty thick and so, um, you know, it's, it's not filling in the, my neck, you know, height all the way, but it's good enough. Do you see how it's, it's good enough? I just slightly, you know, tilt my jaw and then it's, I, I have it right there. Okay. So I just have to, if I let go, I just have to just put a little bit more, more pressure on it. All right. So I do like, like that feeling better. A quick word about the the chin rest. Um, if you find you have a very, you know, longer neck than the average person, it's usually better to heighten the chin rest. They have many chin rests now that are that are higher, and um, instead of heightening the the shoulder rest, right? To have a low chin rest and have a high shoulder rest, and then to fill it in that way, that's usually not not the best um, way. I can talk about that more in, in another video, but. Um, also, um, you want to think about the, the shape of the chin rest and the model. There are a lot of center chin rests, but I don't like the center chin rests. Almost every single, well, not every everyone, because they have this super high lip over there, and I feel like it's kind of digging into my to my neck there. So many of the center ones have like it's kind of cupped a bit too too much, too deeply. So this part, this edge is very tall. 
right? And there are other ones. There are the ones that, you know, like I believe it's, it's the Carl Flesch one. There's like a little bit of a hump, you know, in there. So it has like a nice contour, but when I feel that it just doesn't feel comfortable for me. Um, there are the chin rests that have the the part that goes over the tail piece, but then the chin rest is on the side like a normal chin rest. The, talk, the one I'm talking about is the Guarneri style or anything similar to that. And that's also very nice. But when I have that chin rest, and even with my students, I usually get, get them the Guarneri one. I tell them to get that one. And um, so even then, I tell them actually to put their jaw kind of over the tail piece slightly. And I know that it's not good for us to be touching the tail piece at all. But I feel, I figure that I'd rather you know, cut the losses somewhere, right? So I'd rather have them have a more balanced, more, you know, um, organic posture, right? Where the violin can sit balanced on the shoulder instead of um, getting their jaw over here, way on the chin rest side. And now the violin is very, very to the front. And if I were to let go, do you see how it's, it's falling to the front? But before, when I had it you know, in the place where I like it, right? If I kind of let go, it's sort of tilting, right? But it's basically, it's staying on, on my shoulder. This one, right, I let go and it actually literally falls off. Okay, so this one, where the way I like it, I take my um, jaw off and it's a little bit tilting, but it's not actually falling off. So um, I find that that's, you know, being able to balance the, the weight of the violin itself um, takes a lot of pressure off of me. Think about it. Every single second, every single minute, every single hour you practice and the violin's more in the front, you're going to have to kind of do a bit more work, right, to, to hold the violin in place. And every little bit counts, okay? So I always try to find a more, you know, natural position and as natural as possible. The second thing about the coon shoulder rest, right, I told you why, um, why I like not using the coon anymore. I don't like the feeling of things sitting on the end of my shoulder anymore. I'd rather have everything sit up here, right? And and that's number one. Number two reason is that I find that um, most people I see who use the coon shoulder rest, as soon as I see them put, placing their violin on their shoulder, I see this. So what did I just do? I pressed down with my jaw and I brought my shoulder up. So a lot of times, even, even a lot of people who don't use any shoulder rest, you'll see like this and then you'll see, you'll see the shoulder come up. So they'll put their violin on and then their shoulder will come up. All right. If that's you, <laughs> then if you, if you um, play for many, many hours at a time, you're, you're going to be developing um, some problems potentially. So I would just caution, caution you to um, be careful with that. Find a way to hold your instrument, you know, without uh, feeling you need to clamp the shoulder and, and tighten it upward. And um, only reserve that, uh, you know, that behavior, right, for times when you really, really need it. Like when you play up up at the, you know, upper register, right? See how my, sh my thumb is like not even under the violin. So obviously my arm has, to, my shoulder has to take over. When I'm tuning, right, I, my shoulder has to take over. So there are times when we, we need this, all right? But it's very, very seldom compared to, you know, like if you just look at everything that we play and we practice, it's very, very seldom. Um, and we only use it when we need to. And as soon as we're, we're done with it, we have to, we have to relax it. So be careful with that. Um, if you have that, that habit, then um, I hope in a future video, I can help you with that as well. Give you some suggestions on how to undo it. But postural and tension habits are very challenging. I don't want to, I don't want to discourage you, but I also want you to know that it takes constant, constant thought, constant reminder, and we have to learn how to, um, you know, just start from scratch all over again. You know, uh, one of the things that I was told, I, I, I work with many, many um, um, students of Dorothy DeLay. So, um, you know, Miss DeLay, I, I have played for her before. I've had lessons with her and I um, played in a master class um, for her. And then I also 
have worked with many of her students who are now today, right, uh, you know, leading um, players and performers and teachers, right? And so I've worked with many, many, many of um, Delay's, um, you know, line, right? It's like the, the family tree, right? It's like the family tree of violin. And so um, I consider myself to be a descendant of that uh, school of um, technique and teaching in some way, not, not 100%. And um, they often told me, right, if you want to work on, um, you know, releasing tension, that you, you know, sit in an armchair, right, and you lean your elbow on the armchair, it's probably going to come down to there. And then you practice like your, you know, your vibrato or your shifting or, or you know, anything. And, and, and that is, the first time I tried that, it was frightening. It felt so... So unnatural and terrible, um, but it was a good good lesson for me, and um, it was sort of the beginning of learning how to kind of live and breathe, you know, with the violin. It's an extension of your body; it needs to move and breathe. It can't be kind of clamped down into into place and be still the entire time. Um, so that was interesting. Also, you know, the first time I I learned to play without. A shoulder rest but I've seen many people try that and do it very wrong and it causes more problems so I will try again in a future video to talk a little bit about that you know so I feel it's a little bit dangerous you know topic because that's why I sort of um, put it off a bit too long because um, I, I think um, some of the information I have to give can be very helpful if in the right hands by that I mean um, you're in the right stage of your personal journey to handle such information right but if you're still quite a novice and and not really at the proper stage and then you try some of the things that I'm talking about I think it could be detrimental to your you know overall health and playing so yeah if you're curious try a little bit but I really wouldn't try it a whole lot you know until you're sure that you're you know you're at that level where you it's doing you good.